Well, hello there. Thank you for watching this video. Uh, if you would, take out your Bible and follow along with the things that we have to say. Uh, I'm going to answer another question. We've been trying to answer questions the past uh, several weeks now. Uh, and we got a question about dealing with difficult people. Uh, and so that's what we're going to spend some time trying to do. We're going to try to talk about dealing with difficult people. And I want to begin by reading Romans chapter 12 and verse 18. In Romans 12, 18, Paul says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. In verse 17, he says, Recompense to no man evil for evil. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Uh, and I think verse 18 is, is so key because it says, If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. As much as you can do to affect a situation to be peaceable, do that. Is what Paul's saying. In other words, uh, but sometimes it's just not possible, right? We know there are situations in life where people are difficult and it's, it's impossible to be at peace with people. Uh, and so I just want to spend a few minutes uh, talking about uh, how to deal with difficult people. And I've just got three or four points. Uh, you know, not a, not, a, not a totally complex lesson, but I think good reminders for us all. Uh, and so we know people who we find to be difficult in one way or another. And we all have to deal with difficult people at some time or another in life. A difficult person may be one who is condescending, uh, argumentative, maybe belligerent, selfish, uh, or just they're just simply rude to you and we consider them to be difficult. Difficult people seem to know how to push our buttons uh, and stir up trouble. And dealing with difficult people becomes an exercise for us in patience uh, and love and grace and how we handle ourselves. And so we want to spend, again, just a few minutes talking about dealing with difficult people. The first point we want to make is, uh, when dealing with difficult people, we need to make sure that we understand the situation before we uh, pass judgment or determine how we're going to respond. We need to make sure we understand the situation. I think sometimes we're quick to jump to conclusions without having a full understanding of the situation. Uh, and we don't consider what's going on with the other person, uh, what's going on in their life, what they've dealt with today. Uh, we, we have our moment of interaction with them, and it's a difficult one. We perceive them uh, as being difficult, and we don't really know the full picture. We don't know what all is going on. And so I think the first thing we need to do, as we said, uh, is to understand the situation, the full situation, rather than just thinking about how it's affecting me. We've all heard the saying, I assume, that says we need to walk a mile in their shoes. Before you uh, make a judgment about somebody, walk a mile in their shoes. I actually think that's a biblical principle. In Matthew 5 and verse 41, on the, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, Whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. So the idea is similar there. If, if somebody uh, compel you uh, to go a mile, Jesus said, go with them too. Understand the situation uh, and work with people. Understand them. Uh, know the situation so that you know how to deal with it. Uh, and that's what we need to do. We need to get an understanding before we start reacting to things. In James 1 and verse 19, James gives uh, solid advice. Uh, and I think it pertains to what we're talking about today. Uh, again, James chapter 1 verse 19. He says, uh, wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Uh, and he goes on. But James said, the first thing you need to do is be quick to listen, be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to get angry, slow to wrath. I think too many times we get that order all messed up, and we're quick to speak, we're quick to get angry, but we're very slow to listen. Uh, and so I, I think oftentimes we listen maybe, but we're listening in order to uh, determine when we want to make our response, what I want to say when another person's talking, instead of listening to understand the situation. We need to be swift to hear. That means we need to take a, take a minute, hear the other person out, listen to what's going on uh, before we start answering. We need to know all the situation, all the circumstances, including people who we deem to be difficult 
or maybe even annoying to us. Uh, and so, again, dealing with difficult people, it's going to happen. It's part of life. We know that there's going to be difficult people to deal with. What's the first thing we ought to do? We need to make sure we understand the situation, maybe why they're reacting and acting the way that they're acting. The second thing we need to do when dealing with difficult people, I would suggest, is that we need to respond accordingly. So, after we get a full understanding, then we respond accordingly based upon our understanding of the situation. And now again, every situation may be different, uh, but there are ways that we ought to handle things. So after getting the full understanding, then you determine the appropriate response. You know, I was thinking about Jesus, and of course Jesus is the perfect example in, in all things, right? Uh, and Jesus had his share of uh, dealing with difficult people and uh, we get some examples from Jesus about how to handle those situations. Uh, and the first thing that I would say in, in responding accordingly is we need to sometimes realize that the best thing to do is remain silent. In John chapter 8, in John chapter 8 and verse 1, it says, Jesus went into the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses and the law commanded us that thou should be stoned, that such should be stoned. What sayest thou? They said this, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and with his finger wrote on the ground as though he heard them not. Uh, of course, we know Jesus goes on to say, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. We've talked in the past about this and, and really feel like this was a setup situation because if the woman would have been taken in the act of adultery, they would have had the man uh, there with her that uh, was also caught in the act. But they just brought the woman to accuse her. And verse 6 says they said this tempting Jesus. They, they were putting this situation in front of him in order to tempt him and try to get him to do the wrong thing because if he did the wrong thing, if he responded incorrectly, then they could say, there you, there you go. He didn't obey the law of Moses just like he ought to have. And then they would have something to accuse him against because they, they didn't like Jesus. They, and they were trying to find something to tempt him with so that they would have something to accuse against him that he did wrong. Uh, but these people, wouldn't you agree with me, that they were being difficult because they did not have good intentions. Uh, and the best course of action for Jesus was to be silent. He listened to what they had to say. Of course, Jesus perfectly knew what they were trying to do, and he just remained silent. He did go on to answer them, of course, and then uh, once he responded, of course, it was the perfect response, and they all left him because they, they had nothing else to say. Uh, but sometimes the best thing for us to do in response to a difficult person is just remain silent. Uh, in Jude, in the book of Jude, verses uh, 22 and 23, Jude says, And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. I want to read these two verses because it shows us there's different ways to respond to a situation. Uh, situations are different. So some, you need to have compassion. Some, like in Jesus' case, in some situations, you just need to remain silent. But in others... You need to say with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. So we need to respond accordingly to different situations. I'll give you another example with Jesus in John chapter 8. Uh, back in John chapter 8, but on, on down in the chapter. Uh, so again, Jesus dealing with uh, difficult individuals. Uh, and he was talking to a group of people uh, and Jews that believed on him were there uh, and they began to respond to him uh, as he was preaching to them and saying things like, you know, well, we're Abraham's seed, how, how can you make us free? In verse 33. And Jesus went on to answer them. In verse 39, they answered and said unto Jesus, Abraham is our father. Uh, and then Jesus kept answering them, well, if Abraham is your father, then you do the works of Abraham. Uh, why are you trying to kill me? Uh, and verse 41, they said, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God, because uh, Jesus was comparing himself and putting himself on the level of God. And so Jesus was dealing with difficult people. But notice how he responded in verse 44. 
He told them, Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. So with these people, notice Jesus didn't remain silent in this situation or, or handle with care, uh, you know, like, like we think maybe he did in other situations. In this situation, he rebuked difficult people. He told them, ye are of your father the devil. And he went on to describe the devil and he just said he's a liar and the father of it. And so you're, you people are, are liars. In verse uh, 47 here of the same chapter, he said, He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. Wow, that's pretty strong. So Jesus rebuked these difficult people, and I think it was because it was necessary in this case. Whenever we come against a situation and, and it warrants a firm response, we ought to be ready and willing to provide that firm response. In uh, the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 26, beginning at verse 4, it says, Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Uh, here, it seems like there's a contradiction. The first is saying, don't answer a fool according to his folly. The next verse says, answer a fool, answer a fool uh, according to his folly. But... Uh, what, what's being talked about here in verse 4 is don't play the foolish games and don't buy into the foolish uh, uh, difficult things that are presented to you. Don't respond in a foolish way. Instead, answer a fool according to his folly with a firm answer and response. And I think that's what Jesus did there that we mentioned in John 8 uh, verses 44 and 47. It warranted a firm response and that's what Jesus gave to him. He was direct. Uh, he didn't beat around the bush. He gave them what they needed to hear and uh, he told them, you're not of God. You're of your father, the devil. So sometimes, when dealing with difficult people, not, not in every case, but sometimes a firm answer may be required. What about another uh, example in Luke chapter 6? Again, Luke's account here, uh, Sermon on the Mount. Uh, and in Luke 6 and verse 27, beginning, uh, Jesus told how to deal with people who you consider to be enemies. In Luke 6 and verse 27, Jesus said, But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies, do good to them which hate you, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And to him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. So Jesus tells us how to deal with people that we consider to be enemies. Our goal is not to be uh, mean uh, and hateful and uh, any of those kind of things. We, we are not to respond to them in that sort of way. We're supposed to love them and uh, do good to them. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. Those are things we ought to be doing. We pray for people we determine to be difficult. We bless them even though they're cursing you. Uh, we love those people that we would consider to be difficult or our enemies. Having said that, sometimes the best thing to do is remain silent. Sometimes the best thing to do is to handle with care. And sometimes the best thing to do is to respond uh, in a firm way. That's how Jesus would say uh, that we ought to respond to a difficult person. Understand the situation, then respond accordingly. The third thing we'd say is in dealing with difficult people, don't allow difficult people to make you sin. In Matthew chapter 21, in Matthew chapter 21, beginning at verse 12, we read about Jesus being in the temple. And I think Jesus was uh, uh, emotional in this situation. I think he was angry about what was going on. Matthew 21 and verse 12 says, Jesus went into the temple of God and cast all them that sold and bought in the temple uh, he cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves. And he said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. Jesus was angry, uh, I believe, and I think he had righteous anger at the situation because these people had turned the house of God really into a business. They were selling things and, and it was totally not what it was supposed to be at all. Uh, and so... 
what did he do? He went in and flipped tables over and he ran them out. But he did not sin. I think, that is, I think that's so key. You know, we're human beings. We have emotions. Jesus had emotions and, and there's a lot of examples of him having different emotions. Here, I, I believe he was angry. I think he had righteous anger. Uh, but when they had, as he said there, turned the house of prayer into a den of thieves, I think he was upset by that and he reacted by that by flipping tables running people out of there. But he did not sin, and I think that's key. Sometimes we deal with difficult people, and then we say something ugly that we shouldn't have said. We say things that are inappropriate or harsh, or we lie, uh, and that is not how we ought to respond, of course, in any situation, but dealing with difficult people, uh, we need to realize that we can't sin in those situations. We've got to have our, our head about us. We've got to uh, keep our head screwed on straight, as the saying goes, and make sure we make the right decisions. And so often, so often, that's a difficult thing, and so often we allow uh, difficult situations, difficult people to cause us to sin, and we ought not do that because there's, there's really no excuse. Uh, I'm in control of my actions, and I can't allow sin to come in just because it's a difficult situation. Easier said than done sometimes. But that's the outlook that we have to have. In Ephesians 4, in verse 26, Paul said, Be ye angry, and sin not, let not the sun go down upon your wrath. It's okay to be angry. Now, you got to keep anger in check. If we lose our temper and fly off the handle, then, well, we're, we're, we're going to get into sin. We're going to do things that are wrong. And that's not going to fix any situation. Actually, that's going to escalate it and make it worse. Uh, spiritually speaking, we sin. Well, now we're putting ourselves at odds with God. But then we fly off the handle with that individual who we determine to be uh, difficult. Well, now we've just made the situation ten times worse. It's okay to be angry, but you've got to be controlled. Uh, and sin not, is what Paul said there in Ephesians 4, 26. Control your temper to not sin. Again, there's no excuse for sin. In 1 Peter 3, in 1 Peter 3, beginning at verse 8, 1 Peter 3, verse 8, I'll read down to verse 15. It says, Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful. Be courteous, not rendering evil for evil or railing for railing, but contrariwise blessing, knowing that ye are there unto called that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will live, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? But and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now I realize here that uh, Peter is talking to uh, Christians. He tells them finally, be ye all of one mind, have a compassion one of another, love as brethren. You know, Christians sometimes can be difficult too, right? And dealing with uh, our brothers and sisters sometimes can be difficult. Maybe we perceive that that brother or that sister is difficult, they're annoying, uh, they always are causing trouble. Peter said, have compassion. Don't render evil for evil. They do something that's wrong, you don't respond in turn by doing something wrong. Uh, he said, contrarywise, blessing. So again, we talk about Jesus said that. Uh, so, somebody does evil to you, you return blessing toward them. Uh, because he says you're called to do that. That's what a Christian is supposed to do. Uh, refrain your tongue from evil and your lips that they speak no God. Eschew evil. Have nothing to do with it. Uh, do good. Seek peace. That's things that we are supposed to do. It says the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. His ears are open to their prayers, but against the face, uh, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. So you, you see what Peter's saying here is you need to do this, do good, seek peace, don't get into evil things, because God's against those that do evil. So even when dealing with difficult people, even when dealing with difficult people that are your brethren, uh, you can't allow yourself to do evil in return or sin. Uh, and verse 15 says, Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. 
if we don't respond in a correct way when somebody is being difficult, we're in a difficult situation, uh, then we are not ready to defend what we believe and why our, what our hope is in. Right? And so that, that goes to anybody that we come in contact with, but that also speaks to those who are our brothers and sisters. We've got to have uh, the mindset of we're going to try to do uh, follow God, and that's what my hope is built in, and so that's why I'm not going to respond in an evil, wicked way and get myself into sin, uh, because my hope's in God. He told me to live this way, uh, and, and that's why I'm going to do that. So, don't allow difficult people to make you sin. We've got to realize at the end of the day that we cannot make another person act the right way, but we can control what we do ourselves. Uh, and so, sometimes that's difficult. Sometimes we're not so good at that, but that's, that's the goal, and that's how the Bible would tell us to, uh, to deal with difficult people. All right, so we've said uh, make sure you understand the situation, respond accordingly, don't allow uh, difficult people to uh, get you to sin. The fourth thing we'd say, and the last point we'll make, is that we need to realize that sometimes you... And I may be the problem. You know, we spent the whole lesson talking about dealing with difficult people. Now, oh, there's difficult people out there, and we're going to run into difficult people and difficult situations, and uh, these people are going to really cause me a lot of trouble. But you ever stop to think about, you know, sometimes I may be the difficult person. I may be the difficult person that somebody else is having to deal with. Uh, and so we need to realize that we don't need to be difficult. Uh, we need to try to fix that on the front end. And again, we can't make the other person do right, but we ourselves can do right. And so whether that's us responding to them or whether that's us initially causing a difficult situation, we need to do the right things. Back in Romans chapter 12, in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, Paul said, For I say through the grace given unto me that every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Paul said that we need to not be proud. Uh, we don't need to let ourselves swell up with pride. We need to be humble. I don't need to be thinking of myself more highly than I ought to think, because if I do that, then I'm going to be initiating a difficult situation if I'm carrying myself and conducting myself in that kind of manner, right? And that's going to be difficult for somebody else to respond with if I walk around with this sense of pride. I need to see myself, I think it's interesting, Paul said, uh, I need to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. I need to see myself, try to see myself the way that God sees me. You know, uh, If you're feeling prideful, if I'm feeling prideful, it really humbles you if you look at yourself the way that God looks at you. You, know, you think, well, I'm not so bad. I've really got it going on. I, I do a lot of good things. People really like me. I'm a great person. But you look at yourself the way God looks at you, uh, and you think, yeah, I, I've got work to do. I've got to be better in this regard and, and many other regards as well. I've got room to grow. And again, Paul was warning against being prideful. It's a danger to think that my perspective is always right uh, and that everyone else is the problem. If we do that, we're wrong. Uh, and we need to think about our situation and make sure we're not being the difficult person for somebody else. In Philippians chapter 2, Philippians chapter 2, uh, and beginning at verse 3, it says, Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. He goes on to say, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, and took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. So what Paul says here in Philippians 2 is that I need to be humble. I need to have lowliness of mind, he says in verse 3, and esteem others better than ourselves. I need to be looking out for the things of others in verse 4 uh, and, and not just worried about myself, not being so caught up in myself and how wonderful I think I am. No, I need to humble myself and realize I should be a servant. I need to have the same mindset as Jesus did, as it says in verse 5. Uh, verse 6 goes on to say that Jesus, it wasn't, uh, he didn't think it 
equal, or he didn't think it robbery to be considered equal with God. He was. But he made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. We ought to do the same thing. I want to tell you, I think that if we'd all work harder, and really I'm talking to myself here, if I'd work harder at being a servant, if I'd work harder at serving others, worrying about their needs, looking out for their best interests, I wouldn't have time to think about how difficult people are. I wouldn't be concerned about that, and that wouldn't be on the forefront of my mind at all, because I'd be worried I'd be busy. I'd be worried about being a servant. And that's really uh, what Jesus did. Difficult people are going to arise, even when you're being a servant like Jesus was. There were people that were difficult to him, and he responded in the right way. Uh, but again, I think maybe our problem is not that we're just busy doing good and then every once in a while difficult situations uh, come up. I think maybe we're not busy as we ought to be, and so we're out here looking for difficult situations, and we think, well, I'm right and everybody else is wrong. Uh, and, of course, that is not the right attitude. We ought to be meek, humble, and put others before ourselves. All right, so how to deal with difficult people? We said understand the whole situation. Respond accordingly. Don't allow difficult situations to cause you to sin. And then realize that you and I may be the problem. And so we've got to make sure we're doing the right thing so that we're not difficult for somebody else. All right, well, that was just a quick lesson on dealing with difficult people. There's a whole lot more that could be said. Uh, but I think those are good. That's a good groundwork for how to deal with difficult people, difficult situations. You know, at the end of the day, Every person that you come in contact with, I mean every single person, the person that you may think is your enemy, well, God loved them enough to send Jesus to die for them. That's a soul, and that's a soul that needs to be saved. And if we're going to be the lights that we're called to be, if we're going to be the salt of the earth that God wants us to be, then we need to be looking at people like, that's a person that, that Christ died for, that's a person that God wants to be saved, that's a person that I need to teach the truth to. And that ought to help my perspective as well. If you're listening to this lesson, uh, and you need to realize that God loves you, and God wants you to become a Christian. He wants you to be in heaven with Him after this life is over. But you're only going to get that uh, eternal reward in heaven if you are a Christian. And I mean the way the Bible says to be one. And you've got to hear the Word of God and believe it. You must repent of your sins. You must confess your faith in Christ and then be baptized for the remission of sins. Have your sins washed away. And if we could help you in that anyway, uh, let us know if you want to study more about it. If you've got questions, uh, I give you my email address every time we, we uh, post a lesson here for the Lanton Church of Christ. It's lantonchurchofchrist at gmail.com. Just reach out to me, and, and I'd be glad to correspond with you that way. Now, if you'd like to become a Christian today, I'd like to help you in any way that I can if you reach out. Uh, if you'd like to study more, as we said, just say a word. If you... Uh, have been a Christian in the past and you haven't been living up to your commitment to God, you need to get that fixed. And we'd be glad to help you out in that way as well. If we can pray for you and with you, we'd be glad to do that. Most especially come and worship with us here at Lanton. Uh, we'll be here Sunday morning at 1030. We'd sure like to have you worship with us here. Uh, and if you're looking for a place to uh, attend worship services. Maybe you haven't been going to church and, and you want to get back into it. Well, come see us. We'd be glad to have you here and visit with us and we'd be glad to help you in your spiritual journey. And uh, Again, we just we just want to do the right things the way that God asked us to and we want to make it to heaven after this life is over. That's what it's all about. Appreciate you listening to this lesson. Uh, we'll continue to try to answer questions as, as they come in to me and uh, I appreciate you watching the video. It's an encouragement to me. It's always a good thing for us to look into God's Word in any situation in life and make sure we're responding in the right way. Appreciate you watching this video. God bless you.